The Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. Remember way back when, when you were a kid growing up, you always found time to make a side trip to the little grocery store down the block. That's where you'd find the big display of Mickey snack cakes. Remember? Didn't it make you happy to pick up a devil delight and take a whiff? What a chocolatey smell. And remember the coconut-sprinkled Jim Jams or the cream-filled banana flips? Well, today, Marita Bakeries still make the Mickey snack cakes you used to love as a kid. That's why Mickey snack cakes are called smile food. The bakers know they're spreading smiles and sunshine wherever Mickey snack cakes are sold. Find a little neighborhood grocery store today or a big modern supermarket. Look for the display of Mickey snack cakes. They're all there, like you used to remember. The Devil Delights, the Jim Jams, the Banana Flips. Treat yourself to some fresh memories. Treat yourself to a Mickey snack cake. Have a smile on us. His faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver! Jake Carson was tough and bitter. After the massacre of his wife and child by Indians, Jake had given up trying to make a living in the West and had turned outlaw. Three years in prison had increased his bitterness and he left there determined to take all he could from those who had been more fortunate than he. One day, Jake and a companion rode the trail from San Antonio, Texas, toward the Gulf Coast town of Corpus Christi. You ought to reach Corpus Christi by sundown, Sam. Now, listen, Jake. I agreed to come along with you when you said you had something worthwhile lined up. You haven't said what it is. I uh, met a Mexican bandit after I went to prison. A week ago, he sent word for me to meet him at the Siemens Cafe in Corpus Christi and bring a friend I could trust. That's all I know, Sam. Except that Pedro's message did say that he was planning something that would put a fortune in our laps. You haven't any idea what he has in mind? No, but, but I can tell you this much. Pedro isn't the type of hombre who gives out with a lot of big talk he can't back up. I, uh... Took his side when some of the men ganged up on him in the prison yard once, and Pedro said he'd pay me back someday in a big way. I figure this is it. I hope we get a lot of cash out of it. We sure can use it. If I can believe Pedro, Sam, we'll wind up with plenty of cash. By tonight, we'll know just what Pedro has lined up for us. <laughs> get up there. Get up. Get up. That night, Jake and Sam sat at a table in the Siemens Cafe in Corpus Christi, waiting expectantly for Pedro to arrive. Finally... Hey, look, Sam. The hombre who just came in is Pedro. He's heading this way. Buenas noches, amigo. <laughs> ah, it's good to see you again, Senor Jake. Hello, Pedro. Meet my friend, Sam Parlin. Howdy, Howdy Sam. Pedro. Sit down, Pedro. We got a lot to talk about. Si, senor. Gracias. I, uh, got the letter you mailed from the Nuevo Laredo, Mexico. What you doing down here in Corpus Christi? Oh, we must keep our voices down, senor. We must not be overheard. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. After I left prison, I learned that General Juarez was recruiting forces to drive out Maximilian. 
I went to Monterey, hoping to gain by the trouble. While there, I learned Maximilian had arranged for a shipment of gold to be sent from Corpus Christi. Enough gold to buy the loyalty of the Mexican troops and to stabilize his government. Go on. The sailing ship Matamoro sails regularly between Corpus Christi and Veracruz, carrying bales of cotton. On its next trip, the gold will be taken aboard at night and hidden in the hold. How did you find out about it? In Monterey, I joined Juarez's forces. Uh I was in charge of a scouting party that ambushed the emperor's courier who was riding toward the border. The message he carried verified the plans. I took it, telling the men it was of little importance. Then I deserted and came here. I resealed the message and delivered it to the banker here who was to carry through the plans. That shipment will be well guarded. How do you figure the three of us can get it? Yeah, how about that, Pedro? Armed guards will put it aboard at night while the entire crew is on shore leave, and guards will take it from the ship at Veracruz. But there will be no guards aboard during the run to Mexico. Even then, with only three of us. You... Wait a minute. I have planned well. We're listening. A friend of mine owns a fast boat. He uses it to bring in contraband. He will be in this port tonight. We will go aboard his boat and sail before the Matamoros sleeves. Then we intercept it out on the Gulf and take the gold. When does the Matamoros leave with the shipment? It arrives tomorrow and leaves the following morning. Well, how are we going to get that ship to stop? My friend's boat carries concealed cannon fore and aft. A few well-placed shots will be enough to bring the Matamoros to a stop, amigos. My friend's crew is composed of expert gunmen who will do as they are told. <laughs> Pedro, it looks like you have a good proposition. Count us in. Bueno. <laughs> now, we shall have drinks to our success. <laughs> the following morning, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, rode toward Corpus Christi. Kimasabi. You not say why governor asked you go to Corpus Christi. The government of Texas has arranged to send a large gold shipment to Maximilian by boat, Tonto. I assured the governor we'll do all we can to see that it gets through to Mexico safely. How we do that? I'll uh, wear a disguise. Then we'll ship as passengers. The boat is the Matamoros. Mm. And what we do with silver? Scout. We'll take them aboard, too. Those cargo boats have facilities for carrying livestock. The governor gave me a letter of identification to present to the ship's captain. Well, we'll soon reach Corpus Christi. We'll stop in a grove near town while I change my appearance, and I'll go see the captain. Come in, Get him up, scout. Tonto waited at the cafe while the Lone Ranger went to see the ship's captain. Later, he met the masked man in a grove at the edge of town. Oh, scout. Oh, fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Well, Toto, everything's arranged. Uh, Kimasabi. Yes? While me at cafe, me see outlaw fella named Carson, oh. who get out of prison a few weeks ago. Him sit at table with other fella. I wonder what Carson is doing down here. Of course, he's a free man now. Ah, uh, but while me there, Mexican fella come into cafe, and him go to table where Carson sit. Me here, a fellow with Carson, say something. Ah, Pedro. We saw that ship you spoke about the Mata Morris dock this morning. Keep your voice down, Sam. Sit down, Pedro. We got plenty to talk about. That all me here, Kimasabi. After that, then talk in low voice. Hmm. Strange he should mention the Mata Morris. That's right. Toto, those men will bear watching... We'll ride into town and see if they're still at the cafe. Now, let's go. Easy, easy fella. Come on, Let's go. The Lone Ranger, still in disguise, returned to town with Toto. Jake, Pedro, and Sam were still in the cafe, and the masked man and Indian managed to watch them without attracting notice. When the three men left the cafe... The Lone Ranger and Tonto followed them outside. They're walking toward the docks, Tonto. Ah. Wait here with the horses. I'll see where they go, then meet you later. Ah. Me wait. Tonto waited patiently until the Lone Ranger returned. 
Then, as the two men rode from town, the masked man told what he had found out. Jake Carter and his two pals went aboard a strange boat docked a short distance from the Matamoros, Tonto. I recognized the Mexican as a bandit who was sent to prison about the same time as Carson. You think them plan something? Well, the fact that you heard them mention the Matamoros causes me to suspect them of knowing about the gold shipment. Uh, and what do you plan to do? I plan to learn more about that boat and the men aboard it. How you do that? After dark, I'll try to get aboard without being seen. Mm, but that's plenty risky. You wait in the shadows on the dock until I join you. If I'm not back within an hour, go to the sheriff and ask him to bring his men aboard. I'll give you the governor's letter to show him. Uh-huh. If those men are plotting to get that gold. It's up to us to stop them. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. That night, the Lone Ranger and Toto stopped their horses in the shadows near the wharf, where the strange vessel was docked. Lights shining from cabin on ship show man was standing near gangplank. How will you get aboard? The moon hasn't come up yet. In the darkness, I'll go hand over hand up one of the mooring lines. If all goes well, I'll see you within an hour. Adios. Adios. The Lone Ranger walked quietly onto the dock in the darkness. Locating a heavy rope running from the dock to the vessel, she started upward, hand over hand. I'll soon reach the deck. Finally, he reached the ship and pulled himself over the rail. The Lone Ranger stood a few moments to get his bearings, then cautiously went toward the open portholes of the captain's cabin through which light was shining. Hearing the sound of voices within, he crouched beneath one of the portholes, listening. The Matamoros sails in the morning with a gold shipment, Captain. My plan is for us to sail at midnight tonight and wait for it far out in the Gulf. Well, that suits me. Most of the crew are ashore, but they have orders to be aboard by 11. It's 10.30 now, Captain. What have you told your crew? I promised them a bonus to help us take part of the cargo from the Mount of Morris. They don't know about the gold. Good. Jake and Sam are expert gunmen. They will come in handy when we board the Mount of Morris. Are the cannon fore and aft ready for firing, Captain? Yes, I inspected them a while ago. As he listened, the lone ranger failed to hear a soft step behind him. Suddenly... Reach you, but... Can I have a gun at your back? You make a move, I'll plug you. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Times sure have changed. Time was when people saved cookouts and picnics for summer and lazy Sundays spent under a big oak tree in the town park. Well, today's family eating habits are much more flexible. Mom might have forgotten how easy it is to fix a cook-in for lunch, maybe with hot dogs and baked beans, or a casual dinner with cheeseburgers, soup, and salad. And as you're planning your easygoing meals, don't forget to invite Marita, as in Marita hot dog and hamburger buns. Remember, Marita? We're the people who bake while you sleep. That's the only way Marita can promise you'll find the freshest rolls and bread and cakes the very next day on your grocer's shelf. But remember, we bake our famous hot dog and hamburger rolls all year long. So relax a little. Plan quick and easy meals your family will love. And don't forget Marita. Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger rolls. We're not just a summertime thing. to continue. Taken by surprise as he listened to the conversation inside the captain's cabin, the Lone Ranger quickly raised his hands. Well, what now? Just stand where you are. Captain! Captain, come quick! What's the matter here? I caught this hombre snooping under the open porthole. We cover him. Take his gun, Sam. Right. I have him. Bring him into my cabin. See. Si. Get going, senor. Uh, Listen to you talking in here, Captain. So? That is not good, Captain. I know. 
Go back to your post, Jenkins. You did well to capture this snooper. Aye, aye, sir. Well, Pedro, we better find out how much this hombre knows. If he listen even for a short time, he must know of our plans. I heard enough. There's something familiar about him. Hey, I remember seeing him in a cafe today. Who are you, senor? What does it matter? Why were you here snooping? I found out what I came to learn. We can't let him go, Pedro. We don't intend to. Let's drill him. Throw his body overboard. No, Senor Sam. We wait until we are out in the Gulf. Then we dispose of him. For the time being, we tie him and lock him in the cabin. Yeah, that's a good idea, Pedro. I'll send Jenkins to round up the crew right now. Then we'll sail before anyone comes looking for him. All right, tie him up. Sam placed the Lone Ranger's guns on a table. Then he helped tie the masked man to a chair. After he was securely tied, the captain and the other three men left the cabin. The Lone Ranger, still in disguise, realized he had to free himself before the ship sailed, with him aboard as prisoner. For a short time, he struggled to loosen his bonds, but without success. I must get loose somehow. Used to thinking clearly in emergencies, the Lone Ranger carefully observed his surroundings. He saw a small side table on which there were several glasses and a decanter of wine. He slid his chair across the cabin until he was beside the small table. Then he knocked the table over. The decanter broke into several pieces. Then the Lone Ranger rocked the chair to which he was tied until it too overturned. Sliding across the floor, he managed to grasp a large piece of the broken glass in his fingers. Patiently, and in spite of the painful cuts he suffered on his wrists, he scraped the edge of the glass against the rope until it finally parted. That did it. I can free my hands. A short time later, he had loosened his bonds and was free once more. Now for some action. He quickly picked up his guns, then climbed through a window onto the deck. The Lone Ranger realized the crew had come aboard and were getting ready to cast off. I'll have to act fast. Running swiftly along the deck in the shadows, the Lone Ranger fired several shots into the air. Then took cover between several barrels placed on deck near the gangplank. Keep away from that gangplank or you'll get shot. As the Lone Ranger hoped, the commotion on shipboard warned Tonto of trouble. The Indian immediately mounted and headed for the sheriff's office. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Get him up. Oh. For a short time, the unexpected gunshots puzzled the gunman and the captain until the crewman who had surprised the Lone Ranger came to the pilot house. Captain, the man you left tied up in your cabin has escaped. He must be the one who's covering the gangplank to keep us from sailing. One arm break can't hold out against all of us. Let us take the crew, Captain. We form two groups and attack him from both sides. We have to work fast. The shooting will attract attention. Come on, we'll gun him down, then leave the dock as quick as possible. Come on. Crouched behind the barrels, the Lone Ranger waited for the attack he knew would soon take place. So far, he had prevented anyone from pulling in the gangplank, but he realized he couldn't hold out long. Come on, let's go! They're attacking from both sides. Some of the masked man's bullets found their marks, wounding a few of the crew. The others pushed closer until it seemed that he'd be overpowered by force of numbers. Then bullets began to fly from another direction. Hey, men coming up the gangplank. Toto, with the sheriff and his men, ran up the gangplank, firing as they came. The sheriff's order had a strange effect on the ship's captain. Hold your fire, men! Hey, what's the idea, Kevin? Caramba, why do we not fight them? You fools, they have nothing on us. I'll tell the sheriff we found a stowaway aboard who was trying to wreck the ship. My men have you all covered. Drop your guns. Right, Do as the sheriff says, men. Uh, see, sheriff, I suppose the commotion aboard my ship brought you here. There's a stowaway aboard. When he was found, he started firing at my men. You can take him ashore with you. Sheriff, these men plan to waylay the Matamoros out on the Gulf to steal a certain valuable cargo. He's lying. Of course he is. Oh, wait. Sheriff, there are cannons concealed fore and aft on this ship. I'll check on that. It's against maritime law for a cargo ship to carry guns. Now, some of you men investigate. Search the entire ship while you're about it. Meanwhile, the rest of us will keep these men covered. 
Within a short time, the searching party returned, and the deputy made a report. Sheriff, we found the cannon. What's more, we found some contraband in the hold. That settles it. We're arresting the whole lot of you. Pedro, you got us into this with your talk of stealing that gold shipment. Why, Thunder, they're not taking me to jail. Hey, stop him! He jumped overboard. I'll get him. You're not getting away. Now, come here, you. For a few moments, the two men fought in the water. Then, gasping for breath, Jake Carson finally gave up. No, I give up. I can't keep afloat. Throw down a rope ladder. A rope ladder was lowered, and a short time later, Jake and the Lone Ranger were again on board the ship. The crooks and the crew were tied. Then the sheriff spoke. Mister, we'll charge these men with running contraband and carrying concealed cannons aboard ship, contrary to maritime law. I reckon we can't prove they intended to waylay the Matamoros, but I reckon that valuable shipment will get through without trouble. I hope so, Sheriff. I'm sure you and your men can handle these crooks and get them to jail. See, Toto and I sail on the Matamoros in the morning, so we leave now and go aboard. Adios. So long, mister. And thanks to you... Their plan was nipped in the bud. Now, let's go, Toto. Uh-huh. Oh, that hombre. He's clever and tough. Never have I met one like him before. He's clever, all right. And he can be plenty tough with crooks like you. I will remember his face in case we meet again. <laughs> Won't do you any good. His real features are disguised. He usually wears a mask. But figured a disguise was better this time. Wait a minute. I thought his voice was familiar. Now that you say he usually wears a mask, I know he's the hombre who sent me to jail three years ago. He's the Lone Ranger. Hello there. I'd like to just take a minute to talk to you about Marita Brown and Serve Rolls. As you know, Marita means all that's fresh and good that goes into and comes out of your oven. And Marita Brown and Serve Rolls are the ones that bake to a flaky golden brown in just six minutes. There are 12 delicious Marita Brown and Serve Rolls in every package. And if you don't use them all right away, that's all right, too. Marita guarantees freshness for several days after you buy them. Of course, in your freezer, they'll last indefinitely. But don't wait for company to have Marita Brown and Serves. Your family would love to have a basket of fresh, steaming hot rolls with breakfast, or lunch, or dinner. It'll mean you care. And what a delicious way to show your love. After all, your family deserves the best. They deserve Marita. Marita Brown and Serve Rolls. Listen to The Lone Ranger. It was nearly sundown in the town of Fair Play in southern Kansas when Sam Angel finished harnessing a team of bays to his new prairie schooner. Uh, Does it? They're all set to roll as soon as I corral the women folks. You talking to me or to yourself, Sam? Uh, Oh, oh, I didn't know you were in the wagon, Em. I've been here all the afternoon. Where's Peg? I sent her to the general store to buy a few things I forgot to pack. Dad ratted you women are always holding things up. Uh, We've got a long trip ahead of us. I want to reach Fort Drazos by sundown Thursday. We've got to get started. <laughs> Don't talk to me about getting started, Sam. Peg and I have been sitting in this wagon waiting to start for over a week. Oh, that's different. I had to wait for the blacksmith to make new trace chains. <laughs> Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. <laughs>